Hello, and welcome to Girl STEM Academy. In this multi-part series, we are going to learn how to code in Java, one of the most widely used coding languages in the world. It is also the language tested on the AP Computer Science A exam. To start off, in this video, we are learning about primitive type variables, like int, double, and boolean, and also covering final variables and casting. So what is a variable? A variable is essentially a placeholder that refers to a memory location in the computer storing a value. Without variables, we would have to constantly type out information and remember everything in our head. Why overwork our brains when we can use code to have the computer do it? For example, if you are keeping track of how many glasses of lemonade your lemonade stand sells, you would want a variable to hold this information, so you could keep changing it and using it later. As you watch this video, please click the subscribe button and click notifications on. It really makes a big difference for us to create good video content. So first, we will be covering primitive type variables. The biggest three used are int, double, and boolean. Int takes 32 bits of memory and it stores integer values, like negative 2, 0, or 3. Doubles take 64 bits, and they store real number values, such as 6.43, or even the square root of 2. And booleans take only one bit, because they only store true or false. Let's show an example of each of these and how to use them. I will be using Eclipse to write my code, so be sure to check out our video on how to download and install Eclipse. So, I have my class that we made in the last video open here, and I also wrote a main method, so later I can run my code. Before we begin, let's just go through the syntax. To create a variable, the syntax is var type var name equals value, and then a semicolon. And I'll just write that as a Java comment so we can have that as a reference later. Now let's see this in action. Let's go back to our lemonade stand example. Say you want to keep track of how many glasses of lemonade that you've sold. For this, we are keeping track of a whole number, so we would use int. So the syntax is int, your variable name, and I'm going to use num glasses, equals our value. And for now, let's say we have, we've sold four glasses of lemonade. Now, Let's say we want to know how much each glass of lemonade costs, and we want to store that. Well, can we just use int and do the same thing? int cost glass is 3.50? Hmm, Java is giving us an error saying cannot convert from double to int. This is where we start to use our next data type, which is a double. A double is able to store decimal numbers, so that is why we have to use it in this scenario. Now I also want to store how much money that I've made. So I would do double money made equals num glasses times cost glass. And to represent in times, we use the asterisk. As you can see, we are using previously made variables to express this new variable. 
we can use other variables and operators to create new variables. This shows you how efficient using variables really is. For example, say I change the cost because the price of lemons went up. So now the price of each glass of lemonade is $4.25. Without variables, I would have to go in and change that value here as well and change the money made value. But with variables, I can just change my variable value once and anywhere else in the class or method where I use this variable, I can just keep my code. See how efficient variables are? Earlier on, we saw the example how you cannot store the value 4.25 in an int, and you have to use a double. But let's say I want to store my money made as a whole number. Perhaps I don't care if I've made $18.37, all I want to know is that I've made about $18. To do that, we are going to introduce a concept called casting. Essentially, what this will do is truncate our decimal. So for example, if we have a decimal value of 4.25 here, it will just cut off anything from the decimal point and beyond, so all we will have left is 4. Let's see how to do that in action. We can create a new variable called int whole money equals money made. But as you can see, this creates an error. So what we have to do is cast it. You do this by creating an open parenthesis, int, and a close parenthesis. No, casting is very useful. We can not only just use it from casting a double to an int, but we can also cast objects to other objects. And we will be introducing that concept in a later video. So now that we have finished learning double and int, let's go to the third largest primitive variable type, which is Boolean. Booleans are used to express only true or false. So, for example, let's say I want to know if my lemonade stand is open or not. To do this, I would say boolean is open equals true, or boolean is open equals false. If you enter any other value in place of this, you will get an error. So you have to have a boolean equal to a true or a false. Now, I'm going to introduce a final concept called final variables. This is when you want to express constants. For example, if you are using the value pi in your program, you probably aren't wanting to change that throughout your program. So, you do this by creating a final variable. First you write the final keyword, then your data type, then your variable name, usually in all caps. Well, that's not required, it's just convention, equals your value. Now, what happens if I try to change this later? You'll get an error. Up here, I'm able to change my values whenever I want. For example, I can change my cost of glass to 2.67 over here, and it will update my price of the glass. But here, if I want to change pi to 5.7, for example, it will not work, and it will give me an error, saying that the final local variable pi cannot be assigned. Now I'm going to go in and add print line statements in between each of my lines of code so you can visibly see what the output is. To make a print statement, the syntax is system, 
dot out dot print line and then your value. I'm going to go ahead and create these print line statements for each time I create a new variable. So now I've created all of the print line statements as you can see here. And I want to be able to run my code. In Eclipse, you click on this green button in the top left corner. And down here in the console, you'll be able to see your output. So as you can see, it printed out our number of glasses, which is four. Then it printed out our cost of glass. After we changed the cost glass variable, as you can see here, it changed it to our new value, which is 2.67. And later, when we use the cost glass variable in money made, our code is using the 2.67 number. So as you can see here, our money made outputted our number of glasses, which is four, times our cost of glass, which is 2.67. Then after we casted our money made into a new integer, it truncated off our 10.68 to just 10. It took off everything after the decimal point. Next, we have our Boolean is open, and that just printed true. And finally, we have our constant or our final variable pi, which printed out the value 3.14. We hope you enjoyed watching this video and learning about primitive type variables, final, and casting. If you want to see any other video from us on any topic or specific Java concept that interests you, please mention it in the comments below. Check out our other videos on the Metaverse and SQL. Please click the subscribe button to support us so we can add more content every week. Thank you for watching.